Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. So someone made this shirt for you. Oh, and why do you have? Remember it? our thing? Scully Wood. That was a minute ago. That was Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Scully was to blame. Yeah, yeah. but I don't know who so it is. It? Hold on. How long was this? I don't know because it came with donated bottles and we're just now getting to them. So Look, it could have been a year. So there is quite the collection yeah. of things uh -huh. that were sent in that Daniel was hoarding. I was hoarding. In his, little, his house with the round window. Yeah. <laughs> hoarded them in the corner yeah. of the house. With, and, then, and then he's cleaning out like the old vault room. He's like, oh, by the way, I have a giant pile of cool shit that MBs have sent in. It's not whiskey bottles, so we never put it on the episode. So I have taken taken, it's not ownership, I've taken, confiscated. I've confiscated the stuff and we'll And by out. confiscated, I brought it all down to no. him and said, here's a whole bunch of stuff for I you guys. I sent a task force. Yeah, <laughs> they propelled in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that you guys sent, thank you. Well, it's not whiskey, so Daniel's not gonna put it on a show, but I'll figure out something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, nope. Now maybe um, we'll do like, like YouTube shorts unboxings or Instagram, I don't know, like, hey, there's a whiskey. Hey, this is from Brendan Kite, the Trash Titan. Daniel, he's, uh, you smell that? Yeah, <laughs> that smell that. Yeah, we start. That should be how we start the trash yeah. titans. Like, you yeah. smell that? <laughs> you smell it? Oh, it's a trash titan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> uh, he also sent, he benevolented, the original Hatch bourbon, which we reviewed not long ago. Yes. From, uh, so should we also benevolent him? Sure. Hey, Brendan, you benevolent bastard. bastard. <laughs> This yeah. is Hatch, which we liked before. They sourced that bird, their straight bird from, from Death's Door Distillery. Okay. But this is sourced Minnesota and Wisconsin whiskey, finished in Laphroaig barrels. Ooh. So, we have also had our hands on a Laphroaig barrel. Well, but, we think. But, 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 you put your nose in there and you're not getting punched with peat. Well, so, are there finishing casts that Laphroaig is using to? Yeah. I that's mean, the thing. I think we got. I think we got shortchanged on the smoky barrel. So we got a finishing cast that Lefroy used for a bit. Maybe. Or, or maybe it wasn't even Lefroy and they just know, made man. something up. I don't know. So I'm going to be very, very, oh, I'm kind of, I'm trying to ramble so I can savor, extend. No, you jumped ahead. Because if Oh, yeah. Anticipation no. is the best part of any of this. I don't do anticipation. So, fine. I live in the now. There it is. Yeah, that's nice. Right? Oh, it showed up. It really, I like the nose a lot. First, first glancing blow, chipping right off the edges. Yeah. I like how it married with. It these. really, married is the right word. Yeah. It didn't, it's not like a bourbon with this like coated layer of smoke. Right. It really feels like it first presents in the nose as a sweet bourbon and then weirdly underneath that, Earthy is campfire. a smoke campfire layer. Earthy campfire with classic bourbon. Mm -hmm. Classic bourbon, earthy campfire. I like that. But the bourbon's on top. It's the sweet, it, that's the layer. It's. Ooh. And it's uh, a more ashy campfire than you typically get from a Lefroy. I like it though. Ooh. I like it though. Me too. Anticipation is the best oh, part the nose of is anything. Really great. Anticipation is the best part of anything. If we had barreled this right. and did a barrel sample, I would be. Very excited. Right. I hope that the palate lives up to this nose is really great. Cause I'm also now getting There's some caramel in there. Yeah, there's a, a candy little, corn. There's like a marshmallow quality underneath that. Uh like a ooh, the charred the up. Toasted edges. Mar yeah, see, yeah. this is what Emma loved about all of our malt that had yeah. the toasted marshmallow. Yeah, yeah. But I, we have not had a bourbon that did that. Ah. All right, you going in? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. What's the proof on that? It feels a little thin. Yeah, it does feel soft. I'm gonna say mid to low 40s. Yeah, 45. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so unfortunately the weight of the bourbon was watered down. And so all that's left is it tastes like a budget blended scotch, right? So the slight sweet note and the ashy finish. The nose 
Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna get some more sips in here to really yeah, me too. firm up my opinion. But the nose, I really, really like. Yeah. First approach to the taste, it's good, <sighs> but it, I think it's tricky whenever a nose kind of sets you up for expectations. If that if that first sip doesn't deliver just a wow moment, mm -hmm. even if it's good, you yeah. still kind of feel like, ah. This is why I get so disappointed with McAllen, even though I think McAllen tastes good. Right. So, it's because the nose is so much better. Hold on a second. Just think back. Just consult the archives. Do you think we have ever, in the history of anything we've put on video, said the words McAllen mm -hmm. with all, without also follow up, following up and saying, I love the nose, but the taste is kind of disappointing. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a a really mild sweet bourbon taste. Yeah, with this like sort of floods across ashy finish. It's a it's a it's a nutty honey, mm -hmm. ashy. Man, I was really wanting the palate to just explode on that because the nose was beautiful. It's not bad. It's not bad. No, no, there's no fault. I it's dare not... say it's good, mm -hmm. but it's not great. Yeah, the nose set me up. Right, it's good. Good. Oh, yeah. So for comments. Yes. Here, I'm going to share it with you. You got your phone? This is actually a really nice soft shirt. I'm going to have to. I think it'll fit me too. Oh, yeah. Dude. New wardrobe options. You got your phone? Yeah. Hang on. It's probably going to give me a request in email. Did it? Nope. It didn't. Why is it not giving me a request? Yeah. That's so weird. I should change the shirt to Daniel was to blame. It won't let me do it. Well, just give me the All right, thing. here you go. It's just the top two. Miguel Impolino. Why is it that there are some whiskeys that give me a headache with just a dram, while some others I can drink half a bottle? Okay, so I've heard about this with different liqueur or liquors. Yeah. But never with whiskey. So I'm curious as to what the, what the two are. Okay. Because I have a theory. Okay. To, before we get into the theory, mm -hmm. very curious about the theory. I'm super interested in theory. I have very recent experience, mm. two, that are along this line of thinking. Okay. One, uh, after the dry week, oh, dry week's over, by the way. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but I've a, been over for a while. <laughs> I know, I know, but we, we yeah. just started We cheering. just finished, okay. yeah. So, link in the description below, blah, blah, blah. Dan, if we don't need that, got it. I had some gin, uh, uh, it was a gin and tonics over okay. the weekend. Okay. I had two gin and tonic, nothing excessive. Mm -mm. When I woke up, I didn't even get to the point where it's hangover territory. Not even close. But I woke up, I was like, it's kind of hangover -y. Feels sluggish and... A little blah. hangover -y. And I was, I was thinking of it again. Sugar. Uh, it was just gin and tonic, tonic water. water. Tonic water is sugar. Yeah, it's, no, it's water with carbonated bubbles. No, 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 there's sweetness to tonic water. I'm not, it's not... And there's quinine. In tonic water. You might have a reaction to quinine. Maybe. Anyways. So this isn't the first time it's happened with gin. Mm -hmm. And I don't always do gin with tonic. So it could have been a martini. You got the same this problem. Is just, this, my point is this entire idea is very anecdotal. Right. And I'd be super curious to see if there are any kind of studies because we were meeting uh, an MP and her husband came over on Friday. We're talking and she was saying uh, how much she really liked... Our vodka. Yeah, Silly Goose. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's the vodka, one vodka she can drink where it doesn't make her crazy. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> but when you, uh, her husband was like, yeah, well, hold on though. But, but, she, but you she, and I have both heard. Yes. You and I have both heard a lot of people say something along the lines of, well, I can drink whiskey, but man, you give me some tequila, it's gonna get wild. I think it has to do not with the alcohol, because alcohol is the same chemical regardless of content. It has to do with the other things surrounding the alcohol coming from how it's distilled or from the grain or plant that you use. So the question in my mind is, is it more of the other things that aren't alcohol mm -hmm. yes. or is it more of the cultural experience that you're likely going to have around a bottle of tequila? That's, uh, yes, obviously if you drink too much tequila, you're gonna feel worse than if you drink a glass of whiskey. I don't know. But I think it's chemical based. Okay. If you drink the identical amount, but you f react differently, Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's chemical based. Yeah. Now, what is interesting to me is if he's saying both are whiskey, yeah. that's a thing. So my only guess would be 
one is pot still, one's column still. Right. And the column still, he's not getting a hangover. Right. And the pot still, all the extra chemical and components, he might be. The other thing is, if he has any kind of reaction to things that are like a gluten sensitivity, right? Then E one fifty A is going to activate a lot of those things. Okay. Like like a lack not uh, what do you call it when you can't do gluten celiac right. can't do food coloring. Okay. So do you think there's an element? Well, we're so far off topic, but no, no, this is the same topic. Well, I know we. This is the topic. Oh <laughs> no, the, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think there's something? that could lend itself more to people having a reaction that are it's either higher in the heads or higher in the tails probably in the tails actually why um, a lot of the lower fusel oils are down there that doesn't mean anything to me <laughs> chris riches i recently spent 300 pounds on hiring a limousine and it doesn't include a driver <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> I spent all that money and I have nothing to show for it. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, that was a great setup. Wow. I, that one caught me too, and that's why I had to include it. <laughs> that's just, it's just, it's just mean. <laughs> so, this is the McAllen of bourbon. <laughs> Uh, it, it's uh, it, it, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, and fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.